making the sixth of 30 laps in round two of the International Race of Champions. Tom Sneva is in first place. Kaylee Arborough maintains second. Emerson Fittipaldi is in third. The battle is back in fourth. There lies Derek Bell, and directly behind him in the black car, and you can see him closing on Derek Bell. That is Dale Earnhardt in fifth position. He's almost past Bell twice while we were away on commercial. Sneva stays out in front. Look at Earnhardt pull up again, Chris Economac. He's right there, knocking on the door. Our, our leader, Tom Sneva, has eight, eight IROC starts to his history, but has enjoyed little success. A fourth place finish in Michigan in 1978 was his best, and he does not have a good reputation, as you say, Ken, as a road race driver. In fact, last year in Ohio, in practice for an IndyCar race, he kept going off the road in the grass and off the road and off the road, and the pit man finally got on the radio and said, Tom, bring that $350,000 mower into the pits and we'll sharpen it for you. <laughs> and it was a tough dig for Tom Sneaver last year's Indy winner to take. Well, he says he's a better road racer than he's given credit for. And this morning, he really liked to be thought of better. He'd like to be good enough to win one of these. And right now, he looks like he's on his way. Well, you know, I'm looking at the stopwatch. Kale is picking him up in the corners. It may be that Tom's car is a little bit better on the straightaway than Kale. He had about a... 1.17 seconds at the end of the long straight, but only 85 one hundredths of a second after a set of corners. So Neil is doing a good job. 99.3 was the last lap time. 99.3 miles per hour. They hang it right in there between 99.3 and 99.5. Sneva now leading by 12 car lengths as he crosses the start finish line to complete another lap. Anderson Peter Paldi is doing a great job of picking up the leaders. He probably is doing the best job of any of the 12 on the track right now. Let's go to Ned Jarrett standing by on pit road. Ken, one problem that could develop here this afternoon with these cars is that they will be using a lot more brakes than they did at Michigan. In fact, brakes was not a factor here, there, but it will be here. Kale is running awfully hard into those turns, as Chris pointed out. It looked like Snee was running a little faster on the straightaway, but he might be using up more brakes than he'll have to run the full distance of this race. That's something that all the drivers were concerned about is getting these 3,200-pound cars slowed down going into these flat turns. So they have to conserve the brakes, and they also have to be very careful not to overheat the tires so at the end of the race that they'll be able to get good traction. So they have to enter a little bit of uh, strategy into their driving as well as driving aggressively during the 30 laps here. The seventh lap was a 99.4 mile an hour reading for this man, Tom Sneva, in front, Yarborough in second, and Fittipaldi is definitely closing up. Now, the wind has been really stout. It blew up to 25, 30 miles per hour this morning, and that could prove to be a factor as far as tires are concerned before the afternoon's over, Chris. You know, it's hard to believe that a, that a wind could blow gravel on the circuit, but that's what's happened along the, the lakefront. On that long back straightaway, there's gravel up there. Jordan Johncock said he felt there might be tire trouble today because the car's running over with their thin racing tires, puncturing the tires on the gravel. There's Emerson Fittipaldi, who maintains that we've got a car off Earnhardt. This spun off just at the start finish line. Didn't spin off, drove off, but he fell well back. He was in fifth place. That'll drop him back at least three spots. 99.1 miles per hour on Sneva in lap number eight of 30. They are now working the ninth lap. Fittipaldi continuing to close. Waltrip says he shifts 10 times per lap. Gordon Johncock told me he does about six. Some said they weren't sure. Well, that's true. Some, some of the stock car drivers are got just touching fourth gear past the start-finish line. And the stock car drivers know these engines better. They know that when they're pulling, uh, they stay in the lower gears more, so as a consequence, shift more often. Tom Sneva started to tell me how many times he shifted and got halfway around the back. Chris, he says, God, you better ask somebody else. Running out back, Danny Ungaius in sixth. In seventh is Waltrip. John Cock is in eighth. Benny Parsons is in ninth. Neil Bonnet is tenth. Rutherford, eleventh. And Jackie Yick is on the tail end of the present time. You know, uh, Ken, this circuit here in Cleveland is really remarkable. These bleachers that are temporary are run one mile long down the straightaway. To run this event cost a million six to put up all this stuff, all the cement and the bleachers. It's really a, an amazing undertaking on the part of the organizers. And now we've got some really tight, tight competition coming up behind Sneva here as he flashes by the main grandstand. Peter Pally is now knocking on Cale Yarbrough's back bumper. There you see the three of them. That's a good race. 99.06 miles per hour, lap number nine. We're now into lap number 10, about a third of the way gone. 
round two of the only road race this year. Next, in three weeks from this afternoon, we'll be on the world's fastest track, Talladega, Alabama. The day before, the Talladega 500, which CBS will be bringing you live flag to flag. And then August 11, the finale from the beautiful Michigan International Speedway. One of the nicest facilities anywhere in the world of racing. There's Steve in first. Tom Steve holding on that front position. Peter Fowley drawing a bead on uh, Yarborough now as they head down uh, the east end of the circuit. Emerson Fittipaldi in the blue car. Back to the third. 14 times a winner in Formula One competition and twice the world champion. There's the leader, Tom Sneva. Staying out in front, Indianapolis champion and twice Indy car champion. Cale Yarborough, three-time winner at Daytona and the only man to win the national driving title in the NASCAR Grand National Rack back-to-back -back three times. Flies right there in the white car in that second spot. Fittipaldi definitely closing ground. Steve, incidentally, Ken is leading this year's IndyCar point standings as well. See them around turn three, about 750 feet to get into the high gear, and then they just flat foot it into a hard right-hander. 1.7 seconds interval between the first and third place. So there are the front three. Derek Bell is fourth on Gaia's fifth. Waltrip is sixth, and there's more to come here on CBS. With 12 laps complete, 29.7 miles, Tom Sneva stays in front, Yarborough maintaining second, Emerson Fittipaldi right there in third. The battle is for fourth position between Derek Bell and Danny Ungaius, and if you don't think they're trying, Chris Economaki, take a look at this from out of Derek Bell's car just moments ago. That's Ungaius right on the rear deck lid, and he gets a little wide and finds the wall and nearly climbed over it there. One thing for Danny, he should have been a rodeo cowboy. <laughs> Leader, Sneva. Second, Yarborough. Third, Fittipaldi. Twelfth lap was just run at 99.2 miles per hour, and you're back inside Derek Bell's car. That is the fourth place car. On Gaius is in fifth. that the track is too dirty. The rain that fell here the day fitting up to this event left the back straightaway rather dirty and as a consequence slippery, but everybody seems to be getting a good bite now. In Derek Bell's car. Speed saying just barely under 100 miles per hour. Top speed about 140, 145 miles per hour. There's Derek Bell's car. Let's take a look at Neil Bonnet for a moment, if we might. Now you're inside Neil Bonnet's car. Remember, he still has that taped-up wrist, and you can see the, the build-up they have made on the shifter to help him out there a little. That's the only change on any of the cars. Uh, that shifter lever is about five inches higher than any other shifter lever, and Neil said that he has tremendous trouble shifting with that badly injured right wrist. He is running in 10th position, Neil Bonnet. Remember, he won the first race. We'll review the points for you a little later. He's staying away from that shifter as much as he can. He had his hand rewrapped. They split the cast this morning, and Les Richter, the coach, the guy who put this series together, redid the cast. And here he is trying to shift, puts him in a little pain, and he says that it will be July 30th before he can finally get rid of that cast. It means he's got some pretty hard racing to do. Up comes Talladega, but nowhere near the pile. We have another spin by Dale Earnhardt, just shy of the start-finish line, and he's back underway. You know, if they finish this way, Ken, we're going to have a really tight point battle going into Talladega. Really tight. Earnhardt, Earnhardt's had a couple of problems here in the going this far, and he's fallen back. He's now shown in ninth. Dell and Ungaia seem to be the race, as well as this battle up in front. Where Tom Sneva stays in the lead in our live CBS coverage. Now, remember, tomorrow... We'll be with you from Dallas, Texas. The first time that the World Championship Formula One cards have ever been there. Chris and I have been there the past several days, and it is just astounding what they pulled off down there with about $6 million and just grim determination. And Dallas, Texas becomes the home of a World Championship race, and you'll see it tomorrow with Nelson Piquet tries for three in a row. The last guy to do that was Alan Jones back in 1979. Three in a row. Can it be done? You'll see it tomorrow. Fly to fly coverage with some 17 cameras here on CBS. Tom Sneva first, Kelly Arborough second, Emerson Fittipaldi third.
And they're pulling away from Fittipaldi here. We're getting a, an interval timing there, just a split second between Sneva and Cale Yarbrough. There, those two now pulling away. Derek Bell pulling away from his pursuers in fourth position. And Waltrip is closing up. Waltrip closing on Ungaius. Waltrip, and there's a motion from Emerson Fittipaldi that something's amiss on his car. That is where the pit area is. He was signaling as he came to it. But the battle is developing for fifth spot. The yellow car of Darrell Waltrip has been moving along very nicely, thank you. And he's ready to challenge Danny Ungaius. And as you can see, Ungaius' car from that replay we gave you may not be handling quite as well as it was earlier. Meanwhile, back in front, there you see that effort being made by Danny Ungaius and Darrell Waltrip right there. Waltrip really closing up on Ungaius now. And we know that Ungaius' car must be crippled a tad after that hard hit that it took in the front. But it takes a lot more than that to stop Danny Ungaius. Fittipaldi continues to lose ground. Oh, almost out of control. And throwing that car in there was Waltrip. He'd have had to say excuse me if he'd collected the door on Ungaius' car. They say that car number seven will fit and maybe a flat tire. Well, it's a tough break. Get that gravel out there. You know, if the, they finish the way they're running now, Neil Bonnet will have 27 points if he winds up, and Sneva, if he wins, will have 25 points going into Talladega, setting up a real horse race there. Halfway in the race, 15 down and 15 to go. Live on CBS, Cale Yarborough, the NASCAR stock car man, and the IndyCar man, and in the pits, here's car number seven pitting. Let's go to Ned Jarrett. Danny has a flat tire on that car, and one thing that could happen is we see them changing the tire in the background. Of course, that means that he's going to go a lap down, but he could have overused his brakes because these tires, they do use inner tubes in them, and a lot of times that will melt an inner tube if you use the brakes too hard. And I suspect that that's what's happened, but we will find out once they get that tire off as to exactly why it went flat down. If you have to have your car worked on, you automatically are assessed a one-lap penalty. It's almost uh, foolish to hurry in the pits with that kind of a rule written into the regulations of the race. Ten men working on the car down there. It really looks strange with uh, racing in this country always restricting the number of men that can go over the wall and work on a car. I'm going to one race tomorrow from Dallas, Texas. There are no such regulations. And here's the status of the event at the moment. 15 laps complete. Speed, just a shade under the 99 mile an hour mark. And there's Emerson Fittipaldi back on the track, and he's running a lap down the tail. That leaves Johnny Rutherford up to 11th, Jackie Ix into 10th, Dale Earnhardt is 9th, Bonnet is 8th, Benny Parsons is in 7th. As you look at your leaders another time, Dale Yarborough very determined to carry the stock car colors, challenging the IndyCar twice champion Tom Sneva out of Arizona the story on that damaged tire. Once again, here's Ned Jarrett. Ken, he actually cut the tire. It was not a melted inner tube, as we speculated, but he cut the tire. You can see that cut there. Caused it to go flat. He had no choice but to come in. Now, let's correct ourselves. If he makes a pit stop during the green flag, he only loses the time that he loses on the racetrack. He does not lose a lap. That is only during pit stops on a full caution lap. So, Fittipaldi is far behind, but not a full lap behind. We've got a 10 and 30 second, 100 second interval between second and third place. That's a wide margin, but that battle for the lead continues to wax very hot. Danny Ungaius has come up alive again and moving up on Derek Bell. Danny is fourth, Bell is third, cars four and nine. These colors are something else. We've had all kinds of names. Uh, Danny Ungaius here looking out of his windshield. He's drawing a bead on Derek Bell up there. Some of the cars have had uh, colors like uh, butterscotch or caramel, coffee with cream. I love it. Just an interior decorator was in here deciding what color the cars are. Neil Bonnet called his Michigan winning car a purple Easter egg. That's the car that is now leading with Tom Sneva. Sneva at the keyboard of the car that won at Michigan stays in front here. The third place car is still Derek Bell, and fourth is Danny and Gaius with Darrell Waltrip in the fifth position and Gordon John Cox six. CBS Sports coverage of the International Race of Champions will continue after this word.